Hello everyone, it's Takuya here, and welcome back to the History of Everything podcast YouTube channel. Please, ignore the shirt. My mother got it for me. I wanted to wear it for a video that she would see. So I saw this comment, and I was like, yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't know, Templars were actually the original bankers. Well, maybe not exactly the original. There was a lot of different banking systems before, but the Templars were one of the largest banking systems to ever actually exist in Europe. Because, like, okay, when you're thinking of Templars, what comes to mind, right? You're thinking, like, these holy warriors battling it out in shining armor against their foes, right? But hear me out. Bank manager. Because, yeah, they did that too, and this is the story behind that. You see, when the Knights Templar were originally founded, the goal of it in the beginning was to defend Christian pilgrims that were trying to make their way over to Jerusalem. These pilgrims were increasing in numbers every single year because when Jerusalem was captured by Crusader forces in 1099, it now gave safe passage, or supposed to be safe, to all these people that were trying to go to the city. And I mean, they would travel for literally thousands of miles. So you would then have pilgrims that needed to somehow fund months of food and transport and accommodation, but also simultaneously, they couldn't just carry huge sums of cash around, because if they did, well, that was going to make them a massive target for robbers. But fortunately for them, that is where the Templars come in, both as a source of protection and simultaneously financial security. You see, a pilgrim could just simply leave his cash at the Temple Church in London and then withdraw it in Jerusalem. So instead of carrying money, he would instead carry a letter of credit that was issued by the Order. I am not exaggerating when I say that the Knights Templar were literally the Western Union of the Crusades. But now mind you, the, these guys were not exactly the first ones to start such a service. If we go back several centuries, then in the Tang Dynasty in China, they used something called Fei Quan, which was flying money. This was a two-part document that allowed merchants to deposit profits in a regional office and then reclaim that cash back at the capital. But that was a system that was operated by the government. And Templars in this case were much closer to a private bank, albeit one that was controlled technically by the Pope and run by monks who had sworn themselves to poverty. Which, I mean, yeah, that last part is kind of ironic. While they were individually sworn to poverty, the order as a whole became stupidly wealthy. It really did help that there was a papal bull issued by Pope Innocent II that exempted them from paying any kind of tax. Didn't matter if you were a king, didn't matter if you were a church member, didn't matter any of it. These guys didn't pay taxes. At all. And they were banking. What would happen is that the Templars would collect donations from all over Europe. Kings and queens would give them huge estates. Alfonso I, as an example of Aragon, he left a third of his kingdom to them in his will. But it wasn't just kings. Regular people also made donations to the wills, leaving the order small plots of land that, over time, would seriously add up. The knights ended up owning different castles, farms, whole fleets of ships, as well as the entire island of Cyprus. But mind you, they didn't just hang on to the stuff and not do anything with it. They instead used all these different possessions, these farms, these industries, everything that they owned to generate more wealth. They would rent land, they would trade crops, they would get wool, they would trade wine, they would do any number of things to just accumulate more money. And so as time passed, they just got richer. It reached a point when the wealth of the Templars was so immense that the Order was able to lend out enough money to finance the local wars of kingdoms in Europe, which is an astronomical sum. As an example, in the 1200s, they received the English crown jewels as security on a loan. And when King Henry III wanted to buy the island of Oleron, the order not only brokered the deal, but also collected installment payments from the king. The French treasury also used the Templars as a sort of subcontractor for many of its functions. And this is where the Templars start to run into a bit of an issue, dealing with kings. You see, the issue comes from the fact that in the Middle Ages, there was this very strong habit of kings taking out very large loans from merchants and other important people and then simply not paying it back. I mean, after all, you couldn't force a monarch who was literally chosen by God to do anything. Didn't really work. And for the Templars, their moment came in the form of Philip IV of France. Do you all remember that scene in Assassin's Creed where the Templars were burned at the stake in France? Yeah, that whole thing was not made up. That was a real event. You see, Philip was massively in debt to the Templars, who had helped finance his many wars with England. So much so that the Templars were refusing any more loans until the money that they had been given was paid back. Philip had other ideas. So at dawn, on October 13th, 1307, French officials appeared at every Templar house in the country and arrested everyone there. The king had members of the order tortured in true medieval style, using starvation, sleep deprivation, foot burning, and the rack. Under torture, the Templars would confess to all sorts of sinful and criminal behavior, the spitting on crosses, kissing and sex between members of the order, denial of Christ, worshipping false idols, etc. 
And so over the next several years, dozens of Templars would be burned at the stake, and the Pope would then formally dissolve the order in 1312. So ended the Templars. Now mind you, I feel like I could do a full episode on that trial and all of the wild shenanigans that were involved in it. I say shenanigans, it was a pretty dark subject in the first place. But that is a video for another day. I hope you enjoyed this video on Templars and banking and a little bit of their history. And I hope that you like, comment, subscribe, and do anything you can to help this video in the algorithm. Thank you for watching, everyone. And I will see you all next time. Goodbye, guys.